I'm here today with the uh, curators of the British Art Show 7 uh, in the days of the Comet, Lisa Lefebvre and Tom Moulton. And um, I'm here to ask you lots of questions that we've been, um, okay. we've been, we've been kind of um, on the street, as you might say, trying to kind of catch hold of, of visitors to the British Art Show 7 and to Sideshow. And they've um, sent us a number of questions. I'm quite nervous, actually. <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. What could they be? Could they be? <laughs> um, well, I, I suppose that the, we we have had a question which is asking you to um, asking you very specifically to talk about maybe your least favourite aspect of the current incarnation of the British Art Show. I can tell you what my least favourite part of the British Art Show is that it's going to be over at the end of next year because okay. it's great and I'm really enjoying it and okay. it feels a real shame that okay. it doesn't go on forever. So I don't have anything that I don't like about it. Good, really. okay. Um, I think I'd probably echo Lisa um, if you want something kind of very trivial. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the process of um, engaging with them exactly where the wall label goes Oh, yeah. It's quite, it's, you know, <laughs> there's more fun things in life than that, so <laughs> and making sure those all happen on time. Yeah, yeah, so in, those kind of trivial details. But in terms, I suppose, in terms of thinking about how you make a, how you make your selection, was that mm -hmm. a difficult process? It was difficult, but difficult in a really, really productive way. Because okay. one of the things that Tom and I really love doing is making exhibitions, and by definition, it has to be difficult. Because if it's not. Mm -hmm. And there's really no point to it at all. So it's been really, really hard to think about what does it mean to do a British art show now? Mm. What's the right approach to it? And then once we've formulated how to approach it, which artists do we feel uh, uh, should be in it at this moment now? Um, so the it, whole process is difficult. What does it mean to be ready? I think in any exhibition, not just in the British art show, there's really a series of questions that you need to ask. You always need to ask, why now? Uh, why in this place and what is the exhibition or working with a particular artist going to add to the way that we understand the world around us and sometimes you think well X artist would be fantastic but now isn't the right time mm. or now isn't the, or here isn't the right place or well, this isn't the right show you've also said it wasn't it's not a survey show mm -hmm. so um, how can it not be a survey show um, very easily <laughs> Um, I think, I mean, I wonder what a survey show in the truest sense of the word would look like. It would have every single artist making work in it. You'd have Sunday paint, painters, um, people, children's drawings, you would have watercolours, you'd have every single artist, the length and breadth of it. You can't do that, it's impossible. A survey show is something that um, claims to be definitive. It claims to be in a very dogmatic way. This is a reflection. But of don't, you, but don't you think today. you've done that? No. You don't think you've done that through a kind of through? I mean, the subtitle mm. in the days of the comet mm. is a, is a kind of in in one sense could be thought of as a curatorial, a curatorial thematic that you've attached. Mm. You know. I mean, it's a it's a motif to help um, the visitors to the show negotiate the ideas and the show and the different artists' practices. Yeah. If you have this subtitle, then, then it, 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 in a sense, there's your voice is there. But for us, that's really, really important, and it's all part of us um, saying this is not definitive, it's not a survey. It's entirely subjective, and what? it is entirely our voices. Mm. So we um, have, what is without question, the right honour of being invited to be the curators for the British Art Show 7. And our job is to think about what we feel is really, really important now. And we cannot claim to be representative or to represent any other moments than what we really believe and feel is important now. I mean, say, um, say we were to a show called you know, Cats and British Art, yeah? that would be kind of uh, problematic. <laughs> um, and that would be a kind of homework show. Yeah? Um, we very much haven't created a homework show. And that's why it's important that it's a motif. But, but, but does it not, do you not think that the artists that you've chosen, or a number of the artists that you've chosen, are kind of um, very familiar in, in the kind of current contemporary art? Sure. But do, do, do you know all the artists' practice really well in the British I know the, I know a majority. Mm -hmm. But you don't know them all? I think no, I, no I, well, I don't know them all. Well, I know, I, 
which is exciting for me yeah. as someone who, as, a, as an arts professional, kind of being introduced to. to but, what, but that's really important because you teach art, so you're going to know more than most people know about yeah. it, that you don't know all the answers here. Mm. I think um, if we sat down, in fact, it'd be a really interesting thing to do, and thought about how and where we know all these artists work, it's in a number of different um, moments of circulation. Mm. Not all the artists are represented by commercial galleries. That's really well, this is actually this is a question mm. because someone said has said it, this could be argued to be representative of the commercial art world in London, specifically London. It's out of our control the fact that most of the commercial galleries in Britain are in London. It's a fact. It's, um, so if someone is represented, um, it's quite likely that their gallery will be in London. Obviously, there's commercial galleries it's in Manchester. There's a lot in Glasgow, a few in Edinburgh as well. Um, but some of our artists are represented by galleries outside mm -hmm. London. Um, I think that, um, I can't remember what the stats are, but not all of the artists are represented. And interestingly, some of the artists have come to be represented since our invitation to them and since the opening of the British Art Show. So I think that, um, it's a, a, mi a mis misnomer mm. to... I think the stats are something like um, a quarter of the artists aren't represented by um, galleries in the UK at okay. all. And there's, um, I think, eight artists in the show who have no commercial representation whatsoever. Right. Mm. And so, there's 39 artists in the show. show so. Yeah. No, okay. so that's, you know... Well, that's the question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> but, but, it, but it's, it's very, very important yeah. that, that it's addressed because I think that it's a knee-jerk reaction to an exhibition of this time. I think I've read that comment in relation to every British art show, every Whitney Biennial, mm -hmm. every documentary, every Ven Venice. Um, and I think that it's, it's too knee-jerk and one needs to think a little bit more before making that claim and that assertion. What do you think then about those artists, for example, Matthew Derbyshire, mm -hmm. uh, Dostas Chetwin, mm -hmm. there are kind of a number of artists who have appeared in a number of these quite big kind of survey selected shows. The artists are in this for their work. The artists who have been selected are making the most powerful work that they've done to date. So what does it mean? Does it mean that you exclude an artist because they've been in something before? So we've got three artists who are as close as you get to being household names. Sarah Lucas, Wolfgang Tony, yeah. Christian Markley. They're making fantastic work. Yeah. Just because they're well known, they're not yeah. irrelevant. And it's really important to us that this British art show is not about trying to define hot, bright things, because to us that's an incredibly retrogressive position. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for the new, we're looking for what's important now. Right. We have a rumour that mm. Liam Gillick is going to be joining the British art show, is that true? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that, that is a question I had from somebody yesterday. Um, <laughs> Okay, we can swiftly move on from that. Well, if Liam wants to... <laughs> if he'd like to discuss things with us, well, <laughs> we'll be all ears. <laughs> um, a, a, a criticism, maybe, mm -hmm. that the works feel as if they are kind of um, grounded in kind of, kind of theoretical research mm -hmm. and not enough in the kind of visual lexicon, to use the exact phrasing here. And, um, it's like, why not just write an essay? Why not? Why? Oh, come on, look at this work. We're sitting next to these amazing images by Becca Gaze. Look at them. You could not possibly come up with a way to theorise the content out of them. They're stunningly beautiful. And just behind us, um, behind where the camera is, there's a fantastic work that is by Keith Wilson um, called Ziggurat. that has got all these objects. I mean, for us, art is all about the encounter with it. Um, so, really, no, not at all. Great, right. okay, fantastic. It's really important for us that, let's come back to this idea of dogma, that this is not, not, the not only a do way. dogmatic way of looking at yeah. an exhibition. And for us, we, we've kind of said it quite a few times, that we see um, an exhibition such as this, looking at art made now, completely accessible to everyone, because we are all experts in the contemporary, mm. because we're all existing in now. It. And that's all you need to have. Those are the only tools you need. Yeah. I mean, the way it is, yeah, is yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great. Well, on that note, thank you very much for, ask, for answering all our questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, I hope the performance goes very well. We can't wait. Yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> great. Thanks.